Hey everybody, Johnny Hunkins with Popular Hot Rodding Magazine. Today we're at West Tech Performance Group and we're going to test a whole bunch of headers today on a big block Chevy. And we're here with Steve Dulcich who is going to head up the project for us today. Steve, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. Well, we've got a variety of different uh, passenger car headers, basically from very small to very big. Uh, the header on the engine right now is an inch and three quarter inch primary tube diameter. We're going to step that up to the inch and seven eighths, a very popular size. We've got that encoded and uncoded version, so we can compare the difference that the coating might make to the performance of the header. Then we've got two inch, which is getting to a fairly large primary tube diameter and the fit issues that are associated with that. And finally, a two and an eight inch primary header, which is more of a race style header with a slip, slip fit uh, collector. But uh, that thing should be the right choice for a very powerful engine. Now we also have uh, some collector extensions here. We're going to test those and see if they make a difference too. Well, the collector extensions will help simulate uh, a partial exhaust system. They do help torque, and we're going to illustrate just how much of an effect they have by running our 1 and 7 8 tenor combination with and without the uh, collector extensions in place. We're going to be testing these headers on a really nice 427 cubic inch big block Chevy. Tell us a little bit about this engine, Steve. Well, this is originally a Corvette engine. Uh, the 427 displacement is very popular in the 1960s in various muscle cars and Corvettes. The engine is equipped with the AFR cylinder heads. These are the 305 ASCAS. It's a very high flowing head, even though it's not fully CNC ported. We have a big L-drop single plane manifold and the Holly uh, Ultra HP uh, carburetor. It's going to be a pretty stout combination, but it's still very much a street motor with a compression ratio somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 10 to 1, actually a bit under. So, very streetable, makes a little under 600 horsepower, uh, a nice motor all around. We just stepped up from our baseline test, the one and three quarter inch long tube header to the one and seven eighths inch header, and boy, what a huge difference. It looks like we got better than a 20, 20 horsepower increase there, Steve. Well, if you look at the graph over here, the, uh, the bigger header actually started making up more power from about 4,500 RPM and then just ran away at the top end, so it's a big advantage. Now, what's even more interesting is a lot of guys will think, well, I'm going to put the small header on there and pick up a whole bunch of torque down at the bottom. But if you <laughs> Didn't work at, that way look, so much. If you look at the results right here, the uh, bigger header actually made better torque down low. And yeah, I've, that's the red one there. Now, I've seen that kind of result before uh, with higher powered motors where you just don't have enough header on it. So that may not be what everyone would expect, but it's not an atypical result. Uh, the bigger header is definitely more correct for this engine. Wow, that's cool. Well, I'm very curious to see what happens when we start experimenting around with the header coatings and the collector extensions. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, it's only a few dyno pulls away. About 185. So we've got about um, a 95 degree uh, cool down in header temperature in 
about uh, one minute time. I can tell you, we can feel the extra heat here in the dyno facility. Oh, yeah. It is smoking hot. I mean, when we had to con the uh, ceramic headers in here, it was, you know, almost comfortable. And you can just feel the heat coming off those headers. It's just night and day. This is smoking hot. Well, Steve, we have our results from the dyno on the coated versus the uncoated. And, you know, I'd say that the jury's still out. It looks like we got a little bit of an improvement on the power, but maybe not enough to really say it's statistically significant. But we do have some other surprising results. Why don't you lay them out for us? Well, bear in mind, this is exactly the same set of headers. Uh, the only difference is coated versus uncoated. If you look at the graph, there's just a little bit of a bump right here with the coating in torque and horsepower, a tiny bit showing a top. Yeah, it's very close to the statistical variation of the dyno. It's like but four horsepower, four pound feet yeah. of torque on a motor that's making, you know, not even almost 600 horsepower. Well, you know, every little bit counts, but where we really found an advantage was right here, probing the temperatures. Uh, in this case, I mean, the results were just night and day. We saw an average temperature in the mid 200s with the coated headers jumping to 870 degrees with the black headers. Wow, that's huge. And think of all that heat pumping into your engine bay or a passenger compartment in your running car. That makes a real difference to how your street car performs, yeah. you know, in a, in a daily basis. Well, I remember when I was in there with you shooting the video, it just was hu uh, hugely different. I mean, there was uh, unbelievably hot when we didn't have the, the coating on there. So ceramic coated headers, big thumbs up, not necessarily for the horsepower increase, but man, when you consider all the other components and stuff under the hood, you know, fuel and float bowls and heat soak and batteries and electrical wiring and stuff, it is a huge thing. I would not have an engine without a set of coated headers. That's my personal man, take that, on it. It was just a furnace in there with the regular headers. So. Absolutely, we're on target with that. just did a before and after comparison of a collector extension which is a very interesting test. Steve tell us about the collector extension test. Well if you look at the graph over here what you'll see is we we've changed our test RPM range basically focusing on the range below peak torque because this is where the effect is going to be the most dramatic. Now if you look at the black trace here that's a plain header exiting without a collector extension. You notice this big hole in the torque curve over a pretty significant RPM range, especially evident right here at about 3500 RPM, which is a pretty important uh, engine speed. Now the red traces with the collector extensions added in, and you can see all the added torque within this whole range. Well, I think it was uh, 57 pound-feet of torque at one point, probably well, 3,700 right, RPM or so. Right in there, I mean, it's closing in on 60 foot-pounds right about at the torque converter hit on most street cars. So, uh, That's huge. If you're taking your street strip car down to the track and you uncork it, probably be a good idea to take some collector extensions along. Wow.
stepped up from the one and seven eighths inch header to the two inch header and we've got some very interesting things going on here. Uh, the person you've been seeing in our video quietly uh, operating the dyno is Mr. Steve Brule. He's the dyno operator here at West Tech Performance. Steve, tell us a little bit about what's going on. What are we looking at here on this chart? Well, what Steve and I were just discussing is we've got the inch and seven eighths header versus the two inch header. This is kind of the step up into the realm of this sort of power level that you would typically expect. We see a slight tilt in the curve. The black line is the two inch header, the inch and seven eighths is the red line. We're seeing a slight loss in bottom end power at 3,000. A little crisscrossing in here, not much difference, but right at the peak you see where the two inch header really breeds better. Now with our initial test with the inch and three quarter header, we were so far out of range with that, it was just too small for anything on this about this engine. It was worse at the top by a lot. And also the inch and three quarters now the red line. It's also worse at the bottom. So the inch and three quarters clearly not the right header for anything about this engine. inch header. Now we're going to try the biggest one, the two and an eighth inch header. Let's see. Does this thing have any more left in it, Steve? The big two and, a half, two and an eighth inch header? Well, this is our last setup of the day. Uh, what we found so far today was the uh, inch and three quarter was grossly undersized and lost power pretty much everywhere in the curve. Stepping up to the one and seven eighths, we had a pretty decently matched header, nice power curve throughout. Two inch was uh, just a little better at the very top. But down in the lower mid-range, it was pretty much a wash. Well, my money is on the two-inch one, but uh, you think maybe there's a little left in this big one? I think maybe this might be a little too much, but we're just going to find out for sure here in a second. Well, let's go to the dyno and find out. We just finished testing the two and an eighth inch header, and we've got the graphs up of the two inch compared to the two and an eighth inch, and it looks like it's too close to call there. There's some differences there between the two. Can you, anybody want to get hazard a, a guess, Steve or Steve? What's well, going think, on? I'll take a bite at it. If you look at the very top here, you know, it's virtually the same power within one horsepower. Over here, the uh, two headers, depending on how the Pipes are tuning in at different RPMs, they swap advantage and disadvantage. But where the uh, smaller header has a very clear advantage is uh, it's just going to fit the car a lot better. So you're really uh, losing fitment for not really any gain that's in performance from what I can see. Steve, what the do you think? The average numbers are virtually the same if you look at it from 3,000 to 5,000. But the interesting thing is, is a lot of people are going to think that the smaller header would be better at 3,000 at wide open throttle. Now, on an engine dyno, when we're testing at wide open throttle, a lot of those sorts of thought processes really aren't accurate. I mean, some of the things that people are thinking really probably has more to do with throttle response and part throttle. But this all has to do with tuning. I mean, as far as pipe diameter and length versus intake manifold and camshaft and all of those things have to be taken into account when you're looking for uh, the optimum header. So basically these are two are swapping at a little different RPM range, which is a clear indication of cylinder filling. When the torque's higher, the cylinders filled more efficiently, the volumetric efficiency is higher, and because of the way that it's tuning, it's kind of dropped down here a little bit. The smaller header is actually a, a touch better. Well that's very good. Uh, we do have one more thing we're going to have to test, and that is the shorty header. That's the thing that everybody wants to know, if I put a shorty header in there, is it going to be good? Is it going to kill my horsepower? Is it going to be easier to install? What are the advantages? I say we go in there and uh, let's swap those headers out and do one more.
So that uh, shorty header was really something there. That was a real eye-opener. Um, one and seven-eighths inch primary tubes, very short, and going into a rather small collector flange, something like two and a half, two and three quarter. Um, but uh, the results, not what a lot of enthusiasts would hope for, but there's still hope there for folks if they need that kind of product. Well, if you want to just look at the power up, but the graph shows it pretty clearly. Right from the bottom of the curve, clear across to the top, there's a loss in torque, and a corresponding loss in uh, horsepower, almost 50 horsepower at the uh, maximum power loss here at the high RPM range. Now, the, the thing we want to point out to people here is that this is kind of a comparison of best case scenario, you pick the perfect header for the engine, the header fits in the car, everything's hunky-dory versus, hey, I, I can't put anything in except for either a stock manifold or a shorty header. That's really the kind of compromise, the trade-off that we're dealing with here. The shorty's not going to be your best choice or your first choice if all-out power is what you're after. But if you're looking for fit, you want to do away with a lot of hassle of uh, getting a set of headers up under your car, the shorty is just a nice way to go. Well, we're finally finished with the cornucopia of headers in our big block Chevy dyno test. Wow, I'm really tired, Steve. How about you? Well, I'm okay. We got through a lot of header tests. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about the results. Where can you find this stuff, Steve? Somebody wants to read about this. All the info is going to be laid out in the pages of the October issue of Popular Hop Riding Magazine. Yeah, and that'll be on the newsstand the third week of August. So we'll see you on the newsstand, folks.